And overall, when I'm looking at charts, there are three different trends for any time frame. Okay, so literally, when I'm looking at my two different time frames in order to get my short-term perspective and long-term perspective, I actually can even identify three trends on that as well. I don't currently have this coded for any particular platform. I pretty much do it manually and just write it down as I'm looking at it, uh, what my current trend is. So. What I normally look for is the uh, minor, intermediate, major. Really, with the major trend, that's the main thing that I'm going to be looking for. What's going on in that major trend? Uh, where is, uh, what is that direction? How am I going to be able to participate in that trend direction itself? Um, you know, so I'm going to be treating an uptrend. <clears throat> if I see a major swing top is broken, therefore, I'm going to be looking to buy on pullbacks to areas of demand. Okay, now if you're not sure what areas of demand or supply are, uh, you uh, probably need to attend one of our courses at Online Training Academy. We teach you how to find those opportunities. I actually recognize a few names in here from some of my past students. So I'd like to welcome you guys that are here. And uh, like I said, we, we talk about how to find the right levels. We also have what are called odds enhancers that allow us to be able to objectively analyze those markets and figure out what are the best opportunities and what are ones that are just marginal that we may want to pass on. Obviously, if we're in a downtrend, I want to see that we break swing bottoms to be able to make sure that we have a high probability of having that trend continuing in that downward direction. And therefore, I will sell when we rally into areas of supply. Okay. So when we have a correction, if we don't take out a major high or major bottom, then it doesn't actually change the trend direction. You can trade pretty much any one of those trends you want, the minor, intermediate, or major, but typically I want to stick with trading only in the direction of the major or intermediate trends. The reason why those minor trends are usually just corrections, and uh, I don't want to get caught on the wrong side of those corrections. So what are these different bottoms or tops? Well, what we're looking at as far as the minor bottom or minor top, it's simply a low in price compared to other previous lows. Now, I'm not just looking for one candle previous to it. I'm usually looking for it if you're just kind of looking at a broader view that you had some downward momentum and you make this low and immediately you're followed by a high that's higher than the previous candle. Now, it wouldn't be an engulfing candle necessarily because you wanted to not have the same low as the previous low. So let me go out to my chart here and we'll see if we can find a swing bottom. And as a matter of fact, I have one right here. This is a minor swing bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and disable these moving averages for right now, kind of clean up my chart. I like to focus primarily on price itself because that's really what tells me what's going on. And one of the things to remember about this analysis is this works on any time frame. It really doesn't make a difference. Okay, we could be trading on a uh, five-minute time frame as I have here. I know a lot of traders actually like to look at larger time frames. Uh, obviously, I do for longer-term investing, but we do have a minor bottom, right? Uh, where did I just see it? Actually, I was going to call this one a minor bottom, but I realized it's not. As I noticed, uh, well, let's see, is that low? What's the low there? 28.12, the previous low, 28.12.6. This is 28.12.7, so it's slightly higher by a fraction of a pip. And I'm going to go ahead and disable that as well. Anyway, what you notice is that we have a low immediately followed by a high that's higher than the previous high. That's all. So that's a minor bottom. It usually doesn't mean too much. It could be just a small correction generally. Uh, in the case of what happened here, we also saw a little bit of a reversal of the overall trend, but it wasn't really confirmed until later. This low is insignificant because there's a low and we didn't follow up with a high that was higher than the previous candle. Okay, so that's what I need. In order to see that we have a minor bottom, we need to see a low followed by a high that's higher than the previous candle. So I'll go out to a daily chart here on the euro. And as you can see, we haven't put in a minor low yet at all throughout this area. Uh, we Actually, I'm sorry, I take it back. We have one right there. So right there we have a low. We are moving down, followed by high that is higher than the previous move. Is the five minute just market noise? Well, it depends. I trade the market noise, so to speak. I actually like it because I can pull anywhere from uh, you know 20 to 60 pips out of a move on a short term. So generally, <clears throat> because I'm a uh, I'm a short term trader for my income, it allows me just to pull out some of those quick moves in the market in just a couple hours. 
So like I said, you can apply this to any time frame. Just because I was using a five-minute chart doesn't mean that you have to use a five-minute chart for this. I go out to the daily or even a four-hour chart, which I'd look at for some longer-term trades, and just get an idea of what's going on. So with the minor bottom there, as it continued to break that minor bottom, shows that the downward trend is still intact. So that's what a minor bottom is. Uh, you're just looking at a, a low immediately followed by a higher low. And a minor top is a high in comparison to other highs followed immediately by a, high, a lower low. So looking at this, you can see right here on a bar chart that I have, there's a low being put in. And immediately following, there's a new high. That's a minor bottom. The minor top, here we have the high immediately followed by a low that's lower than the previous candle. So that just gives you an idea of the minor trends. Now, that once again, that's not really too significant. I don't tend to trade those. What I'm going to be looking at is intermediate or major trends because that's going to give me more money. Uh, that's going to give me the, the better moves. So what I'm going to be doing here is on the intermediate bottom, I'm going to look for a low price compared to previous lows. And now I need a high that's higher than the last two highs. So this is going to be a little bit more significant. And if we are able to break down below that buying pressure, that's where we start to see that the downtrend is likely to continue for some time. And it gives us the signal to be able to trade in the, sh in the uh, short direction. We're selling the currency pair. If we see an intermediate top, it's a high compared to the highs around it. And again, it doesn't have to be just one or two candles. Usually, I want to see a high for the last yeah, anywhere from 10 to 15 candles or so. Just a, an overall move to the upside. But we get a big sell-off then, and we make a low on the, the immediate. It's got to be the immediate candle that's lower than the two previous bars. Okay. So looking at this, <clears throat> you know, that's not even a good drawing there. There's a low, but I've got to extend this one higher. So let's go out to the live charts to see if we can find a couple of these. As a matter of fact, I have a major top right here. Or sorry, intermediate top right here. Notice we have a high in price. We were in a motion to the upside. And immediately following this, you can see here's my low. And I'm going to go ahead and extend that left and not right. So the low that happened immediately following that high had a low that was lower than the last two candles. So that tells me now that we put in an intermediate top. And if we don't break that intermediate top, then we're continuing in that downward trend. If I see that we finally break that intermediate top, then it tells me that the intermediate trend has reversed. And we are likely to see bullish pressure. So that's one way of identifying uh, what my intermediate trend is. Currently on this picture for the euro, it is in downward trend because we had that intermediate top and have not broken it. So uh, if we happen to have a uh, move to the upside that breaks that, the intermediate trend would change. There may also be an override from that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the, obviously, the major is going to override what happens on the minor trend. Okay. So as of right now, the, the minor trend, or intermediate trend, excuse me, I'm using the wrong terminology there. The intermediate trend is currently down. High, followed by a low, lower than the last two lows. If we continue to move down and don't break that, even if we make another intermediate low, and we can look for that to see if there is, I don't see one right now. What I'm seeing is a bunch of major tops, so I'll point those out in just a moment. But if we do happen to see an intermediate, uh, another intermediate top, that's lower, and we break that, that could also tell us that we are changing the trend direction. 